uh, virtualization and virtual machines. Um, so on the Series 8 exam, this is a very minor concept. Pretty much the big thing they want you to know is that it exists um, and what requirements you would build a virtual machine to have, which is basically lots of memory, lots of, lots of processing power. For the version 9 exam, they go into more depth on it. So this lecture has more information than you're going to need for your exam, but good information to know for the actual real world. So virtualization, what it is, is, is a hardware-assisted uh, virtualization enables a host platform uh, called a hypervisor uh, or a host operating system to run one or more guest operating systems as part of the host desktop. So what that really means is I can take this one laptop and even though I'm running Macintosh OS X on here, I can actually run Windows in here as well and I can run Linux in here as well all at the same time. So if you notice here, uh, we have like we have a Windows machine, a Linux machine, and a Solaris machine all being run inside one physical computer. Down here, this is a copy of my Macintosh, and I have Windows XP in the background, Windows Vista, and a version of Linux all running at the same time. So I'm running four different operating systems all at the same time. Uh, lots of different programs allow you to do this. Uh, Microsoft has one called Virtual PC, which is an old product. Hyper-V is the newer one. It's on Windows servers. Uh, also, you can get that for Windows 10. Uh, VMware is a commercial product, uh, which is one that I use a lot. Uh, Parallels is one that usually is found on Macintosh as well. Uh, VirtualBox is a free and open source one that you can play with on your own. Um, DOSBox it emulates a DOS operating system, which is the old text-based operating system from the 80s and 90s. Uh, and QEMU is an older free open source one as well. Uh, again, the two that I really like, I like VMware and I like VirtualBox. VMware is about $50 to $100, um, and it doesn't give you that much more features than VirtualBox. So for free, VirtualBox is a great, great program. Um, I use VMware a lot just because um, I have a free license to it based on the schools I teach at. And so since we teach with that one at school, I use that. But otherwise, I have used VirtualBox a lot, and it works really, really well. Um, if you have a Mac and you need to use Windows for work, virtualization is a great solution. Uh, one of the classes I teach is the introductory computer class here at the community college. And all the assignments have to be done on a Windows 8 machine. And so a lot of students who have a Mac can't do that, so they would end up installing VirtualBox and installing Windows 8 in a VirtualBox, and that way they can run it through, through there on their machine as well. So what are virtual machines? It essentially allows a single computer to run two or more operating systems at the same time using the same hardware. Um, here's a picture from my machine. You can see I'm running Windows 7 down here, Windows 8 over here. Kali Linux here, and then in the upper left, Windows XP. So I've got four different machines running on top of my uh, OS X machine. And the reason I had this up like this is because I was doing a CEH class, and we were using the Kali Linux machine to attack these other three machines. But, um, but again, it, there's lots of different uses for doing this. Uh, virtualization, you have what's called a host and a guest. The host is the physical machine you're using. In my case, it was a, it was a Macintosh machine. The guests are these four other operating systems that are running. The hypervisor is the software that is creating the virtual computer for each of these to run on. Uh, they can be server hosted, where you have them actually running on a server down, in the, down the hall or across the world, or you can do it as a client side, which is what mine was doing. Um, one of the schools I teach for when we do our ethical hacking class, we actually have a lab environment um, that all the students can log into through their web browser at home and get into our virtual environment and run these virtual machines and attack with them uh, without even having anything installed on their machine. So virtualization is coming a long way. Some of the benefits we have with virtualization is cost savings. Instead of me having to have four machines, I have one machine that can do all the work of the four. Uh, it's less hardware that's required. I can support older software. For instance, Windows XP is no longer supported by Microsoft but I can still run it in this virtual machine and not have it connect to the internet and still use it for all my old programs without it being a security risk. Um, you can reduce hardware support issues as well. And one of the ways you do that is what's called virtual desktop infrastructure, which is not on the Series 8 exam, but it is on the Series 9 exam. And we'll talk about that a little more in a second, I believe. But essentially what it is, <clears throat> is it's a server environment that runs all these virtual machines. And when you as the customer want to use a machine, your terminal at your desk is just a stupid terminal that has a web browser. And it reaches back to the server, which actually runs the Windows operating system that you're using. So when you're actually logging into Windows 7, you're not. You're logging into the server all the way down the hall or down in another server facility and bringing that virtual machine to you to use. 
Um, and it allows us to do all the security patches and the security updates without having to worry about all the end user devices. <clears throat> so what kind of resource requirements do you need? This is the important slide. This is the one you want to memorize, okay? Uh, Multi-core processors are needed. You want to have a quad core or higher uh, processor, it works really, really well. Um, you can do this with less though. Like I said, my laptop is only a dual core <clears throat> and I had four machines running at once and it still worked. You want to have a lot of memory too. Maximum amount of memory, right? Um, the more memory, the better. Minimum of eight gigs of memory, 16 gigs or more is preferred. Uh, you also want a 64-bit processor. More processor, why do we need a 64-bit processor? Because without it, you can only run four gigs of RAM, right? So you have to have a 64-bit processor to be able to support at least eight gigs of RAM or more than four gigs of RAM. Um, and again, a 64-bit operating system for the host is essential because it needs to be able to access all that memory. The guess can actually be 32-bit, that's fine. Um, here's a picture of my particular machine. Um, like I said, I have a 2.3 gigahertz Intel i5, which is a dual core processor. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I'm running a 64-bit operating system running Mac OS X. That gives me enough that I can run three or four virtual machines at one time and still have them operate pretty effectively. Just to give you an idea if you're trying to piece out like what would I need to buy if I want to build a virtual machine, that's probably the minimum you want to use. And again, this is a 2011 model machine and it's still working pretty well for this. Network requirements. So while we increase our hardware resources for our hosts and our guests and our client-side virtualization, it also is going to increase our network requirements. So if I'm running four machines, they're going to use four times the amount of network resources, right? If they're all going out to the internet. So I need to have a fast network card, okay? Um, you need to have a really fast network card if you're going to be supporting virtual desktop infrastructure. Because like I said, I have this server over here and all six of you are connecting to this server to run your operating system. Everything's happening over the network. So we want to have at least gigabit ethernet and have a really fast network card for that. So emulator requirements. Uh, virtual machines rely on what's called a virtual machine manager, a VMM, to emulate hardware to the guest operating system. So when I installed Windows in my virtual machine, it didn't think it was being installed on this hardware. It thought it was being installed on a single core uh, processor machine with one gigabyte of RAM and a 20 gigabyte hard disk, none of which really exist. It's all just a piece of this whole machine that it's emulating and pretending to be. Um, your VMM needs to ensure it supports the hardware that you're gonna put it on. So if you're using VMware, it's not a big deal. It's going to support it. If you're using VirtualBox, it's going to support it. But if you want to use some of these ones that are like virtual desktop environments, like VMware's um, uh, vServer or vSphere, um, it has certain requirements and certain hardware that it supports and certain ones that it doesn't support. Uh, and so you got to make sure it supports the one that you want to put it on. Uh, and to do that, you basically go through your device manager and figure out, make sure that it has the right pieces for what you're looking for. Security requirements. So. One of the things that we always worry about with our virtual machines is security, okay? Um, the administrators have to know which virtual machines are running uh, and which machines are virtualized in order to secure their network. Uh, the hypervisors themselves, which is what runs all these virtual machines, has a lot of security features, um, even if many of the hosts and guest virtual machines don't. Um, so, for instance, here I have VMware, and you can see I actually have an ability that I can encrypt the, the image of the disk. So if somebody steals that virtual machine, all the data would be encrypted and they couldn't actually read any of it. Um, here we also have where you can create the virtual machine where it is its own environment and doesn't interact with the host operating system. Or you can have it fully integrated where you can drag and drop files between the guest and the host. In this case, I have it enabled where I can drag and drop and copy and paste between these two machines. That's less secure than if I had them in complete isolation. And so depending on what my use is, you might want to isolate it and you might not. So, if you want to do virtualization, what is the most important things you need? Select two. What's the first one? RAM. Lots and lots of RAM, right? And CPU cores, right? Really good processors. Really important to have lots of RAM and lots of processors. The reason why is as I build more of these virtual machines, I'm going to give them parts of those machines, right? I'm going to give them more of those processors. So, if I have a eight-core processor physical, I can give, I can run eight virtual machines, each getting their own dedicated processor, right? So that would work well. And lots of RAM gives me the ability to run more machines. That's the uh, basics of virtualization. 